Welcome back guys, this is Shane. So today's video is a deep dive review of the GoPro Hero 8. I've watched countless videos on this particular unit online. And I haven't found one video that wraps up all the pros and cons in one. So I've actually written out some notes and we're gonna cover this section by section. And what I'll do in the description of this video is put some time codes down there. So if you wanna just listen to all the favorable stuff, you can find that. If you also wanna to listen to some of the stuff that I think needs improving on future models of this particular camera, you'll find them down there as well. So just to let you know, I paid full price for this here in Melbourne, Australia. I actually got the bundle pack, which came with some accessories as well as a few of the other accessories, which you'll see in future videos. I'm gonna give you my pros and cons review on this because I really feel like so many channels leave out some of the things I've noticed about this after owning it for a couple of weeks. Let's get into it. Let's start with image quality, and that's the main reason that I purchased this. I wanted a camera that I could capture 4K 60 or 50, depending if I'm in a PAL region or NTSC region. Frame rates vary there, thanks to the refresh rate and light flicker rate. So that's why they have that. Now in Australia, I can easily set this to run at 25 or 50p, and when I travel to the United States later this year, I can set it to 30 and 60 and I won't have any issues with light. So that's really cool. One of the other huge reasons I went for the GoPro Hero 8 over some of the other alternatives out there is the fact you can turn the fish-eyed lens look off completely and run it in what they call linear mode, which gives you a very similar frame to what you're looking at right now. It's widescreen aspect ratio, but it removes that sort of warped sides. Now, if you want to blend this with say, footage from a regular mirrorless camera or something like that, you won't have any problems doing that at all. And that's the way I'll be running it. So for me, the ability to turn it, you know, away from or off from super wide or wide angle lens and switch it into linear mode was a huge selling point. One of the things to take note of with the GoPro Hero 8, it has two recording bit modes, either low or high. If you're gonna be using this and you want the best video quality, run it in high. Now the small downside of high is, it's pretty much the industry standard of around 100 megabits per second, whereas low is way less. Now if you're just uploading straight to YouTube and you're not too fussy about it, then run it on low if you wanna save some SD card storage space. But under certain conditions, especially once you start getting a little bit less light, you're probably better to run it on the high bit rate. For me personally, I'm gonna be running it on the high bit rate the entire time. Up next, I wanted to have a chat about Infinity Focus, and I wanted to first give props to the Everyday Dad YouTube channel. He's got a great YouTube channel. I'll leave a link up in the cards. You can check that out. And this was one of the selling points for me when I saw a whole lot of videos, including his. The Infinity Focus on this is so much better than other options out there. And I'm not a brand snob when it comes to any type of gear. I just know what I like the look of. And no matter where you point this, if, you, if you're vlogging or whatever, you'll be in sharp focus, the background will be in sharp focus. On other cameras out there, you'll you probably notice the face on the person isn't that sharp, but the background is really, really sharp. And that's a huge downer. Anytime you're using an action camera, you want everything to be in focus and in sharp focus. So for me, this was a much better option over something like the DJI Osmo Action and Pocket. Now I put a video up regarding why I purchased this over those two. If you wanna watch that, you can find a link up in the cards. Let's talk a little bit about the color science in the GoPro and what I really liked about this over other videos that I saw where people were doing comparisons was, but what I like, which is a higher sort of contrasty look, this looked really cool, but it does have one small thing about it that might not be for everybody. I kind of like it. So I'm in, my, I'm in my 40s now, getting a few expression lines and all that kind of stuff. It almost feels like the GoPro has some sort of like Snapchat beauty filter. Not that I've ever used those by the way, but I've seen so many of those pictures go up on Instagram and all that where, you know, it almost feels like it de-ages you a few years. And now you might like that, you might not, but it's definitely worth pointing out. I really feel like it kind of smooths out your face a little bit, even though you're in sharp focus, it's not a focus issue. It just feels like it does something to your skin. Now I remember the iPhone, one version of it, I can't remember off the top of my head which one it was. When it first had this selfie mode, you, it would do the same thing. It would make you look better in the photo than you actually looked. Now my GH5 over here is not very flattering at all. Uh, and I find this to be extremely flattering on just in regular light. So there's definitely some sort of processing that goes on. Uh, I don't know if it, it's not like a face detection thing, but it's just a nice filter that you kind of get on there. Now, I don't know if you can turn that off. I haven't found any settings for that, but I can definitely and clearly see a difference between this 
and something like a prime lens on a GH5. Let's talk a little bit about the stability of the GoPro Hero 8. One of the main reasons I wanted to buy this was so I didn't have to take this thing on my trip overseas. This weighs over two kilograms, which is 4.4 pounds, and it's an absolute beast, and it's just another thing to carry that I just didn't want to take with me. Now, I did downsize to the Ronin SC, which is the smaller one over this Ronin S, but I put it in my bag and I went, this thing's gonna be huge. So that's why I started looking for action cameras. Once I saw how great the stability was with this, I was sold, man. There's a few trade-offs which I'm gonna to get to in a moment, but the fact that this is as light and as portable and just as steady as it is, I guarantee that most people who buy this GoPro Hero 8 over say something like a professional gimbal will get much better results if you have no idea what you're doing because all you have to do is turn the stabilization on and pan and tilt and it looks beautiful. I took this up to the hills I did some footage of just panning left and right, just with this little built-in you know, free tripod that I got with it. And the image quality looks stunning. It looked like it was on a gimbal. At the expense of some picture quality loss over say taking a professional GH5 with me, and, and this big sucker over here, but this is just so easy. It really, really is. So for when I travel, I'm taking a couple of GH5s, I'm taking this and I'm leaving the big gimbal at home. It's just practicality, it gets an A+. One of my favorite features on this, and no doubt you've seen it over the last few years on many incarnations of the GoPros, is the hyperlapse feature. I first got to test this a couple of years back in Germany. Steve from Boston, if you ever watch this, mate, I've still got that file on my computer, and odds are you're probably gonna see a little bit of that right now. So we're in a town in Germany, and he sat, sit it on the dashboard, and we drove, and I was blown away by that kind of footage. It was spectacular. You can shoot it in either four by three or 16 by nine, and you might be thinking to yourself, why would you shoot four by three? You actually get a little bit more picture and then you can crop it down to 16 by nine. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility there as well. But if you're not into, interested in any of that, you can just shoot in straight up 16 by nine. I've tried it here, just driving around with this guy on my dashboard and it works beautifully. It's just a great feature and it all if you're unfamiliar with it, it does it all in camera. So you don't have to do anything in editing unless you want to crop the frame a little bit. So what you get out of the camera is something very usable, very functional, and it's a great way to jazz up your videos that little bit more. Let's talk a little bit about low light performance and you can't expect too much from a sensor that's this small. The GoPro Hero 8 doesn't shine in low light conditions and the stabilization will suffer as well. Now, if you're using this on even an overcast day outside, you're not gonna have any problems there at all. But once it starts getting past about dusk, odds are the results are gonna to start to look really noisy. If you're using this indoors and you don't have studio lighting, it's not gonna look very good either. So this is an outdoors only camera in my opinion. You can get away with it if you've got some studio lighting indoors, but it's not really designed for that. Due to the small size of the sensor and its compact form, just look at the GoPro Hero 8 as an outdoors only camera. If you've had some experience and some luck with it indoors, let me know. But under non-studio lighting, it looked terrible when I walked through the house with it. It just wasn't very good. Let's talk a little bit now about the battery life of the GoPro Hero 8. And this is where I feel like it's maybe a little bit of a letdown. It's not surprising it doesn't last as long as expected given the size of these batteries and given the shooting conditions. So what do I mean by that? If you're gonna just hit record and walk away, you'll get much more battery life than you will if you're stopping and starting it, turning it on and off and so forth. And that's just one of those things a lot of other YouTube channels don't talk about is how different it is once you hit pause and record a whole lot of times as opposed to just hitting record and walking off. Now also depending on your frame rate, also depending on if you're shooting in slow-mo and all those kind of things as well, you'll notice a drastic difference in the battery life. What I found was leaving it on my dashboard, hitting record, it records for well over an hour, no problems there at all. I'd estimate around 70 minutes, something like that. But if I'm stopped starting, it almost feels like I'm getting between 45 minutes and about 60 minutes. So yeah, not great. If you do buy one of these, I highly suggest getting a second battery or getting one of these dual battery charger and battery packs as well. This will allow you to charge two batteries in the charger and always have them ready to go instead of having to charge the battery just straight in the GoPro, which was how I was doing it before. And this will lead me into the next criticism. 
Up next, I wanted to have a chat about excessive heat when it comes to this GoPro Hero 8. And this is common through all the action cameras of many different brands. One of the things that shocked me was how hot the GoPro Hero 8 gets. And it can pretty much turn itself off after about two hours of continual use. Once it gets to a certain temperature, it will turn off. Now this will vary. If you're in the snow, it might not ever turn off, right? But if you're sitting this on your dashboard, you got your air conditioner on, but the sun's coming through and heating it up even more, I haven't had it shut off on me personally, but it gets so hot that I actually just said, you know what, I'm gonna turn this off and let it cool down for a while because it was stinking hot. What I've always found with electronics that heat up excessively is they never stand the test of time. So I'm really interested to see how well this does long term. You know, if you are skiing or snowboarding and it gets really hot, at least you can warm your hands up. But <laughs> for someone who's doing my kind of shooting, it's alarming just how hot this gets. It's, uh, it gets uncomfortably hot. This section, we're gonna cover the audio quality before we get into one of the criticisms about it. So the first thing I really like about this is the microphone on the front sounds great. I'll show you a sample of that. All right, so one of the things I wanted the GoPro for was to do basic walking shots. I'm not gonna be talking to the camera a whole lot, but you are listening to it right now with the onboard microphone. There's a little bit of wind, but nothing too much. It's actually coming from behind the camera, so hopefully the audio works. suffer from a lot of wind noise what I've planned on doing now is just still taking a lav mic with my zoom recorder and syncing that up in post and there's one other reason why the critical flaw of the GoPro that no one's talking about is every 4.3 or 4.4 gigabytes around five minutes of 4k footage it will split the file now if you're recording in 1080p you'll get a much longer file before it will get up to that 4.3 gigabytes maximum before splitting the file. And not only does it split the video, but it splits the audio. So what does this mean for you guys? So when it splits the file and you drop it into your timeline and you wanna join it together, one of the biggest problems is you'll hear an audible click as you play over the join. Now, when I delved into this further and zoomed right in, I could see that the audio was cutting out before where the video ended. So there was a clear gap that should have been filled with just a small section of audio to make that transition seamless. Let's say for example, you're making a video where you're talking for 20 minutes, much like this, the audio is gonna glitch every five minutes or so in 4K mode or every 11 minutes or something, whatever it is in 1080. So as it splits the file, it's also splitting the audio track. And due to that small glitch of audio that isn't quite seamless, you can actually hear it pop it sucks. Now I actually contacted GoPro support about this and they told me just to watch the videos in camera. So horrible customer service. This glitch sucks, but I can tell you the good news. If you've got a, an external audio recorder like I have with the Zoom, I'm not using it right now, but I've got one on my desk over here. It, it syncs seamlessly and you won't have that problem. So if you're gonna be doing long form talking content or you don't want any audio glitches, get a Zoom recorder get a lav microphone and sync them up in post and you won't have any problems. The, gr the great news is the video is seamless, right? You can't see that there's a cut, but you can, you can definitely hear that cut. Maybe it's because of all of my years of audio engineering, I feel like maybe I'm a little sensitive to that kind of stuff, but just hearing that, that little click as it changes over totally sucks. I hope they fix that in a firmware release. Now internally in the GoPro, it has something called raw audio. And this gives you the ability to get a secondary audio track as well as the audio that's burnt into the video track. And I thought, oh, this is the solution. I'm gonna get, you know, if I record for 20 minutes and it cuts the file every four or five minutes, I'm gonna have one long audio file. No, it cuts the audio, which renders that raw audio useless. Now, if you're just doing vlog type content where you're gonna be hitting record and pause a lot, you're gonna not notice any of these problems, right? But it, on, on the long form content in particular, the raw audio files that you do get, they still have that audio glitch. So GoPro, if you ever watch this, which I highly doubt you ever will, 
you need to create the raw audio at the length of the actual file or the video file. Don't split it, then, the, then we wouldn't have any problems with the audio. So if you did it that way, we'd be in business. Let's talk about some of the downsides of buying the GoPro Hero 8 over the GoPro Hero 7. Now the GoPro Hero 7 is a less expensive option now that this has been released. I went for this because it was the new one. I've never owned an action camera up until purchasing this. And for me, this wasn't a big deal because of the type of filming I'm gonna be doing with it. And the kind of guy I am where I take care of my gear, I'm not gonna be doing any action with this, so to speak. The, the most action this is gonna get is me walking around with a, a little tripod with me. So that's about it. But you cannot replace the actual lens cover on this. So if it gets scratched, cracked or damaged, you'll essentially have to send this in to have it replaced or have this, the actual lens cap replaced. If, you, if you're if you gonna be doing a lot of action sports, rock climbing, you know, even, even surfing where it might hit a rock or something like that, I would recommend getting the seven over the eight. You'll save a few bucks and you'll have the ability to also change out anything on the lens if it, if it does crack. Now you can get like a little piece of plastic that will go over the lens for the GoPro Hero 8. I'm not even gonna bother. It is tempered, so it, odds are you're not gonna have any, well, too many problems with it getting scratched if you were just to like lay it down on the table or whatever. But for me personally, it wasn't a big deal as I won't be using this for action sports, but if you do and it'll be thrown around and all that kind of stuff, you might actually be better going for the Hero 7 or go for the Osmo Action. So there's a reason I wanted to make this video for you guys. I know there's a lot of people who will be looking for this particular camera as something that they can take while they travel who might not be using it so much for the action sports. There's plenty of action clips of this guys running around with it and all that kind of thing as well. I want to give two shout outs actually. Everyday Dad videos, man, his stuff is great. So thank you so much for everything you do on your channel. It's been a huge help with this. And Authentech, sort of strange dude, but great videos. And he's probably the king of the action camera videos. I'll leave links in the description if you want to check out those channels also. But I gotta tell you, there were some videos that just didn't really cover the kind of questions that I had. And not knowing that the videos or the files were gonna split every four gig kind of sucked. And then the audio problems as well. Like I said, this, these are problems that are only associated for me who might, for guys out there as well who wanna make long form content with this as opposed to just little clips. If you're making little clips, most of the issues I have with the, the, the files being split or even the audio problems aren't a problem for you guys. But for someone like me who wants to use this to actually put into my production rig with my GH5, even though you might be going, will that match? I think it will and I'll do a video about that coming up. I hope this video has been helpful. I wanted to put something together that's a little bit different to the rest of the videos out there. I saw so many people you know, running with it and jogging with it and riding their bikes down hills with it. And I thought to myself, what about guys like me who aren't gonna be doing any of that, who just wants a really light travel camera without the fisheye look? How does it work for that? And in my opinion, it works spectacularly. I'm gonna be using the Hyperlapse a lot. I'm gonna be using this just as a walk around camera when I travel, and it's just a beautiful image quality. So overall, minus my nitpicking about the files getting split, which is due to a file system called FAT32, which basically means the files are gonna get cut every four point something gig. Now, the GH5s don't have that problem, but I'm so used to having one big file when I record for 20 minutes that having lots of little ones can be a file management nightmare. But with that aside, I'm wrapped with what I've got. The only downsides I really have of this is the fact that the audio doesn't seamlessly go together in editing. Now, I use Final Cut Pro. If you've had better experiences with something else, please let me know, but have a good listen before you comment because every test I've done where I've joined the files, the audio is not seamless, even though the video is, and it gets extremely hot. They're pretty much my biggest criticisms, but for what it's gonna save me in the hassle of bringing this Ronin S with me, this is gonna be fantastic. I can't wait to travel the States with this. It's gonna be one of my cameras in the rig that I'm taking, and it's gonna be the lightest, most compact rig out there, and I'm gonna get some really great results. Thanks for watching, guys. My name's Shane. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I really thought I'd make this video mostly for people who are like me or similar who just don't want to actually run around with it or tie it onto a bike or anything like that, who just might want it for car footage or walk around footage. And I think that's, for me, where this thing shines. It does a great job of that, even with my small critiques about it. But I think it's important to know the full story anytime you're going to go out and spend 
X amount of money on this. This was 600 bucks where I live in, in Australia for the pack. So I got the tripod, this little thing, and an extra battery and a few other bits and pieces. I'll give you one last tip before you go if you've lasted this long. When you get this out of the box, it comes on this little plastic thing, which is actually still on right now. And I've just been using this in the car on my dashboard. It works great. This is the thing you're supposed to throw away. It's just a little piece that holds it in the box. And I, I think it's great. It's got little, little feet on the bottom and it doesn't move. It feels really good. So I'm gonna keep this little thing, but I'm coming up on the channel as well. I'm gonna cover some accessories, which will be the suction cup mount and also this dual battery charger as well, because uh, yeah, like I said, it's probably important that you get one of, or depending on your shooting situation, I would still highly recommend getting one of these. I'll leave some links in the description. Thanks again for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up. I'll catch you soon. See ya.